वेलकम फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ ऋतु डी पटेल लेक्चरर इन केमिस्ट्री एट पारुल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वेलकम्स यू ऑल टू द एक्टिव लर्निंग वीडियो सेशन ऑन द चैप्टर नंबर फाइव दैट इज सीमेंट ग्लास एंड रिफ्रैक्टरीज इन दिस सेशन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग द चैप्टर नंबर फाइव दैट इज गिवन इन द अप्लाइड साइंस टू केमिस्ट्री टेक्सट बुक दैट इज रिलेटेड टू डिप्लोमा जी टी यू सिलेबस लेट इज ट्राई टू डिस्कस द कंटेंट्स ऑफ द सिलेबस Here in this chapter we will be discussing cement and its constituents composition of the portland cement manufacturing of the portland cement setting and hardening of the cement glass and its variety and various application of the glasses then we will be seeing the definition of the refractories characteristics of the refractories then we will be classifying the refractories into three categories that is acidic basic and neutral we will be also studying the applications and properties of the refractories in this session this chapter is chapter number 5 that is cement glasses and refractories that is given in the gtu diploma syllabus chemistry book now let us try to proceed ahead cement first of all a very important component that is used in construction field that is cement what is exactly cement let us try to describe this cement in a simple words it can be described as a material possessing adhesive and cohesive properties which is capable of bonding materials like stone bricks and building blocks so you all are knowing that cement is used to bind the different materials like stone bricks etc okay so that cement is can be defined as a material possessing adhesive as well as cohesive properties so it can bind the same substances as well as different substances this adhesive cohesive word has taken from the different terms that is cohesive means forces of attraction between same molecules and adhesive means forces of attraction between different molecules thus we can say that cement is a material possessing adhesive and cohesive properties which is capable of bonding materials like stone bricks building blocks etc let us try to see what are the constituents of the cement constituents of the cement you can say very clearly here that you have in the cement first is lime approximately 62 to 67% is the range of the lime present in the cement then we have silica that is 17 to 25% present in the cement alumina content vary from 3 to 8% calcium sulfate vary from 3 to 4% then we have iron oxide varying from 3 to 4% then we have magnesia varying from 0.1% to 3% in the range we have the sulfur content in the cement that is varying from 1 to 3% alkalis are also present into cement that is basically having the percentage of 0.1 to 1% in the cement content so we can say that constituents present in the cement are various depending on the proportion the properties of the cement are going to change that one has to remember for example lime is there silica is there alumina is there now we will be discussing in the details each function of the each constituents these all the constituents are basically having their chief role in different properties allotted to the cement let us try to see what are the role of this constituents now first is the role of the silica in the cement silica is basically you can say the your sand okay so silica is having sio2 units like kind of the structure this silica plays a very important role in the cement it forms di calcium and tri calcium silicate and this formation of the di and tri calcium silicates is basically going to impart a special strength to the cement then you can see the excess of the silica increases the cement strength but prolongs the setting time what does this means that is if you are adding excess of the silica to the cement then the strength is going to increase but the setting time of the cement is going to basically also increase we can see here the role of the alumina in the cement that is you can clearly say 
alumina is going to impart a quick setting property to cement it means what your cement how long the cement is going to take time to set or how quickly it will set that all depends on the property of the alumina amount added okay so you can say that alumina is going to impart quick setting property to the cement you can also say it acts as a flux and lowers clinkering temperature what is this clinkers formation what is this clinkering temperature that will be discussing later on now you can also say if there is excess alumina added then what will happen it will weaken the strength of the cement okay so the one has to remember that if alumina is giving the property to set up the quickly for the cement but if excess amount is added then at the same time what is going to happen it will weaken the cement you can see the role of the calcium sulfate in the cement this calcium sulfate is basically present in the form of the gypsum and its function is to increase initial setting time of the cement so the cement is going to basically take a little bit time to set so it is basically going to increase the initial setting time of the cement so calcium sulfate again plays a very major role then we can see the role of the iron oxide in cement iron oxide is basically responsible to impart the properties like color hardness and strength to the cement so one has to remember that whatever hardness whatever color and whatever strength comes to cement that is basically imparted from the side of iron oxide also you can see here the role of magnesia in cement small amount of magnesia imparts hardness and color to the cement okay so it is basically giving a little bit of the hardness and color to the cement now if you are adding very high content then what happen cement will not sound proper it means its formation and basically its setting time its color all the things are going to change if you are adding very high content of the magnesia thus high content of magnesia may make the cement improper okay so that one has to remember now you can see role of the alkalis in cement this alkalis usually get carried away with the gases that are coming out in the process but if alkalis are not carried out then what are the probability these alkalis may form the aggregates basically okay if they are present in the high amount then chances of the aggregate formation will be higher and this is going to create trouble in the process <coughs> you can see here so before going ahead you all can just have the properties in the minimum nutshell that the lime is there silica is there alumina is there calcium sulfate is there iron oxide is there magnesia is there sulfur is there alkalis are there each one of the constituents present in each quantity of their limits are going to play a major role for giving a cement a special properties okay we have seen that silica is basically giving a it is giving long setting time to the cement you can say alumina is if present in the excess amount may weaken the cement this one has to remember if you see for the calcium sulfate again you can say calcium sulfate may increase the initial setting time of the cement okay iron oxide may impart properties like color hardness and strength to the cement at the same time you can say small amount of the magnesia present is going to give a specific property of the hardness and color to the cement alkalis at the same time if present in the higher amounts are chances of formation of the aggregates that is clinkers are more there okay now let us try to discuss the basic properties of the cement cement color should be uniform that is what on the appearance it should look uniform okay then you have if you touch the cement then it should sound smooth on touching that is also very important then next thing you can see here cement should be free from lumps okay lumps should not be there it means there should not be aggregate formation for the cement 
then we can say the fourth point that is setting time of the cement should not be less than 30 minutes okay so this is very important that shed if the setting time is less what will happen cement will get hardened very quickly so that we don't want so it should not have setting time less than 30 minutes so color should be uniform it should sound smooth on touching it should be free of lumps and setting time should not be less than 30 minutes this one has to remember about the basic cement properties you can see here the composition of the portland cement okay what does this portland cement consist in what are the components that are present in this portland cement let us try to have a look we have a tricalcium silicate then we have dicalcium silicate we have tricalcium aluminate then we have tetracalcium aluminate then we have calcium sulfate then we have calcium oxide then we have magnesium oxide so this is very important then we have production of the portlet cement okay how this portlet cement is basically produced each of the raw materials are crushed first okay whatever are the components if you see here these all are your raw materials these raw materials are basically crushed first that is the first step of the production and then they are ground okay now after this what we are doing we are taking this mixture to the rotatory kin that is a big instrument now in this rotatory clean the crushed material is there and then this clean is heated up to temperature of 1400 degrees celsius to 1650 degrees celsius you can imagine a very high temperature is reached in the cement formation now what happens the component that you are adding that is basically undergoing a chemical reaction at this high temperature now and due to this mixture is added okay chemical reaction is added and then what we do mixture is added to now clinkers whatever chemi after chemical reaction whatever components are there they are taken to the clinkers now then these clinkers are basically cooled and pulverized to fine powder form which is the final state of the cement so this one has to remember in the portlet cement formation you can see here how this rotatory clean is working with the diagram you can see slurry is basically collected at the upper end of the clean just look at the diagram that is given slurry is collected at the upper end of the clean okay what is the next step that is there you can say hot gases or the flames are forced through lower end of the clean okay then this clean consists of a dry zone what is happening there in this dry zone is the water of the remaining slurry is evaporated okay so this dry zone is basically useful to evaporate the water of the slurry then we have carbon dioxide is evaporated from next section of the clean okay so that one has to remember that after the water is evaporated with uh, then this slurry is sent to the next section from there carbon dioxide is basically evaporated you can see here the diagram in which the uh, you can see the flames are passed from the lower end then the mixture is fed from the upper end then a whole the process is different chambers are there that you can visualize very clearly okay there is a burning zone there is rotating arrangement there is a dry zone that is useful to evaporate the slurry water then it goes to the burning zone and then later on the steps are there then what is there in the next step at this stage a small lumps are formed okay later on after sending the slurry to the dry zone and you can say the next stage where co2 is evaporated then after that what happens a small lumps are formed these lumps are basically your aggregates that one has to remember now this lumps roll down and reach burning zone where temperature is 1400 degree celsius to 1500 degree celsius okay so it means what now lump is going to roll down and going to reach the burning zone you can see in the diagram here the burning zone is given okay so lump is after drying dry zone it is going to pass to the burning zone now in this burning zone as aware you are already given the temperature range 1400 degree celsius 
to 1500 degree celsius now you can see here very clearly in burning zone calcined product is formed and nodules are converted to small hard greenish blue balls that are known as our clinkers okay so whatever calcine product after reaction after passing through the various stages come out are basically coming out in the form of the hard greenish blue balls that are called our clinkers ball mill and tube mill are used to carry out the fine grinding of the raw material and clinkers okay so we can get a cement in powder form with the help of tube mill and ball mill you can see the preliminary grinding is done in ball mill and the final grinding is basically done in tube mill that you have to remember you can see the now the stages how the cement is going to set what are the process we have discussed the process of production now we can see here what is the setting of the cement in that we'll be taking up the first is the initial setting of the cement now what happens you take a cement and when you are adding water it is going to give the cement paste okay this loses this paste whatever is formed this cement paste loses its plasticity within 20 to 30 minutes okay this losing of the plasticity is called initial setting of the cement this one has to remember okay so this you can say that paste is formed when you add a water to the cement this paste is going to lose the plasticity when after 20 to 30 minutes and this losing of plasticity is called initial setting of the cement moving ahead you can say the final setting of the cement the final setting of the cement basically takes place after 8 to 10 hours of mixing it with water okay so this one has to remember that cement is not going to set very quickly the final setting almost takes 8 to 10 hours after it is mixed with the water then this mass after 10 to 8 hours you can say it is going to become a very stiff mass so then after this if you try to remold it or re remix it to the form paste then this is not possible practically because the mass is very stiff stiff and it has almost final setting of the cement has taken place and due to this reason it is not possible to remold or remix this paste coming to the very important aspect that is your glass now looking to the glass we have discussed the cement session coming to the glass now glass is defined as amorphous transparent or translucent supercooled liquid of silicates or borates this 